Hello dear students welcome back to my English video class Today I am going to take the chapter 4 of your class 11th English textbook Hornbill that is Landscape of the Soul okay written by Nathalie Trevorai Students you can see it is written Landscape of the Soul okay what do you mean by landscape as you all know that it has two meanings the first is landscape may be a portion of a land or territory and the second meaning of landscape is uh, a picture representing a real or imaginary imaginary scene okay so here the second meaning is there okay so let's come to know and try to understand the introduction part of this chapter let me tell you before coming to this that there is a difference which has been described between the Chinese art and European art okay so let's come to know about the description of the author as well as the introduction part of this chapter the chapter is about how different the Chinese art form is from the European art okay the writer uses two stories to make contrast okay what do you mean by contrast contrast is a difference, difference okay a, a difference between two objects uh, two people or you can say two concepts European art is about reproducing an actual view whereas Chinese art is about not creating a real landscape. Try to understand I'm reading this line again. European art is about reproducing an actual view whereas Chinese art is about not creating a real landscape. Okay. European art is an artist way to let viewers show exactly what he wants them to see in the landscape. Whereas when we talk about the Chinese art, we find that it is the artist's spiritual and inner voice where you can travel from any point, okay? And it lets the viewer create a path for their imagination, okay? We'll try to understand this chapter as through the you know, some of the stories, the author wants to tell you that in what form the Chinese art is different from the European art. So we are going to see the description of the author in this chapter that how a Chinese art form is different from the European art form. Okay. So before coming to the summary, now let's discuss some of the keywords of this chapter. So the first word is splendid, which means superb or very impressive. That's very common word. I am sure you will be knowing it. Astonished. Astonished means greatly surprised. Now the next word is anecdote. Anecdote means a short interesting story of a real person is known as anecdote. Apprentice. Apprentice means a trainee or a learner. Void. Void means empty or vacant. Okay. Doism or you can say Taoism which means a Chinese philosophy based on the writing of Lao Tzu. Okay. So this was all about some of the words of this chapter. Now let's move to the summary of this chapter. So students, now let's cover up the first story that the author has mentioned and that's a Chinese folk tale. In China, during 8th century, the Tang Emperor commissioned a painter Wu Dozi to decorate a wall in the palace. Okay, once uh, a painter named Wu Dozi was called by the emperor to decorate a wall on the palace. Okay. Upon seeing the wall painting, the emperor started noticing the outer appearance, okay? As soon as, as the emperor saw the painting, he started and noticing the outer surface or the outer part, the appearance of the painting. But the painter drew his attention to a cave and told the emperor that he would take him inside the painting, okay? Understood what the painter said? Painter drew the attention of the emperor to a cave and told the emperor that he would take him inside the painting. The painter entered the cave and the entrance closed behind him. Okay, the emperor couldn't enter in it. And as soon as the painter clapped his hand, the painting on the wall and the painter too became disappeared. They both were not there. So that's a folk tale. So through this story, what do we understand? What do we conclude? That if somebody is a master in something, if somebody is skilled in anything, okay, then only he can go beyond that. Or we can say only that he can go to that spiritual world that he deserves only. None other than who doesn't understand the 
depth and the essence of that work okay so that's all is there in this first story now let's try to cover the second story and when we go through the another story it has been described that how a chinese painter wouldn't draw an eye of a dragon as he feared that the dragon would become alive and it would fly out of the painting now this story again shows the power of art okay when we come to the another story we find that this story represents a european art form where a master blacksmith falls in love with a painter's daughter but the girl's father didn't approve of him because of his profession okay so what happens so one day the blacksmith sneaked into his painting studio what do you mean by sneaked into when you are moving secretly that nobody could notice okay so sneaked into his painting studio and painted a fly on the painter's latest panel okay. the fly seemed so real that the blacksmith made that the painter tried to hit it first before realizing it that it was in the painting okay he thought that it's a real fly and that's what the painter tried to hit it but when he realized that it is actually not a real fly it's in a painting what he did the painter was accepted by him as a trainee okay in his studio and gave her daughter's hand to him later the blacksmith became one of the famous painter of his time what do we understand students what do we conclude in this last story here you know that the master blacksmith was not a professional painter so sometimes here the author is talking about that it is not only the professional painter think out of the box but here some other can also go beyond more what you think okay so let's try to conclude this chapter with some more line so when we come to the conclusion part we find that these stories revealed as how art form is believed to be followed in two different regions in the world in europe an artist wants the viewer to see a real view point by borrowing his eyes okay the art must be perfect and must be illusion likeness okay as for the uh, european artist whereas in china the artist doesn't paint a real one but uses his inner and spiritual voice to create a solid piece of painting the viewer can enter the painting from any point and can travel according to his own imagination so that's the main difference between the chinese art form and the european art form the chinese concept of art is also expressed as shan shui which means shan shui means mountain water okay it is used together to represent the word landscape okay so that's all about the chapter hope you would have understood this chapter i would request you all to read this chapter yourself thoroughly i'm sure you're going to get it more than what i taught so that's it for now thank you so much take care and goodbye